This is Twit. What do you think, Andy? Did Apple create a competitor for itself at the same price point? Even this, even very, very similar chips, just different operating systems. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that they're cannibalizing each other. I think that they're uh, increasing the value proposition of what is, let's just, let's face it, a really expensive computer. It's a thousand dollars for the larger iPad Pro. That's that's without that's the keyboard. And without yeah, exactly. the pencil. And then, yeah. then add three hundred and fifty dollars plus hundred dollars if you want the keyboard and the pencil. Uh, and that's if. But uh, but even if you've just spent a thousand dollars on an iPad Pro, in a world in which a thousand dollars will buy you a very very good Windows Ten tablet that next year or the year after or the year after that will run some really good ARM based silicon, but not now. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 something when when you, when you consider that this is something that couldn't can run actual real desktop software off for that kind of a budget on uh, on another platform. I think that it makes it more uh, more competitive. Like Renee said, there are there are a lot of people who have that who have the kind of money where it's not as though three hundred fifty dollars doesn't matter, but it's not a really really heavy choice. It's something where they've got the dough. Uh, they like the way it looks. They like the way that this thing performs uh, from a productivity standpoint when you have uh, an integrated keyboard and a trackpad and this very very smart sort of display and they'll go for it but and the up but the other part of it is that this it really does it, it moves the needle a little bit on the mac when you think of uh, the iPad Pro, uh, particularly the smaller one, as not as a tablet, but as a, a Mac OS sidecar target. As I can, I can walk anywhere inside. I can carry this this little this sleek Apple touchpad device with this nice little folding keyboard anywhere I go in the office building. And because I've, I've, I'm mirroring the display from uh, my my MacBook Pro in my office to it. It, as in in uh, in a very very real sense, it is the super super thin and light touchscreen based Mac that a lot of us have been begging for for a long long time. So, like I said, it, it comes down to value proposition and preference. Obviously, it's interesting too because yeah. that old Phil Schiller doctrine was always, you know, they they want to cannibalize themselves. They don't ever want to be in a situation where another company cannibalizes them. And they're if the Mac takes sales from the iPad, the iPad has to fight back. And if the iPad takes sales from the Mac the Mac has to fight back. And this was a huge year for this because the Magic Keyboard really put pressure on the Mac. Like people were like, that's it. I'm using an iPad from now on. And then the M1 Max came out and they're like, look at this battery life and you can run Final Cut Pro and you can run Xcode on it. And boy, did those Macs push back on the iPad Pro. And I saw people switching back and forth, you know, both times this year. To, to to be fair though, just 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 to, to say quickly that if you are use if you what you need is a laptop and you're trying to use an iPad instead, there's going to be some pain that is inevitable. You are this is like as this is Werner Herzog's view of the universe that there the universe will be indifferent to your suffering and there will be suffering and you uh, <laughs> you can you can get you can get around it and it's it's certainly very very useful. But there will be that time where oh that's yeah. great no I, I can definitely join your live stream oh that's right you're using a piece of software that kind of works on on iOS but doesn't do the things I needed to do on Mac okay. Yeah. I guess I'll bring my laptop Unless you're instead. like Tichi yeah. or, or Snell and then you're, <clears throat> you're flying. <laughs> I I also have to say well, see and this is funny cuz I wanted to say but then the M1 just makes me want to use the Mac, but it is really essentially the iPad chip. So yeah. I don't yeah. I don't know what that means. Well, I think means. it's the other way around. I think Apple always built a Mac. Like ah, I, I think you're right. Not to be facetious, but I think Apple That's was a good always way building to put desktop it. chips, and they put them into these mobile devices. Yes, because we even last year, even when this iPad Pro came out in March, I remember thinking this is why oh, why is it so overpowered this is so much more yeah. than you need in this device and i think i said it i think if you looked back you could find me saying that and my presumption was well we're going to see a lot more from the ipad at some point or ios at some point that's going to need this horsepower but i think you're right renee i that was the wrong take on it the right take was exactly what you said they had built a desktop chip and since they had it lying around they put it in the ipad but they knew where they were going and because with they it were used to because they were used to these tiny, tiny thermal envelopes. Wow, was it efficient. And right. then it turned out when you put it back into an actual desktop machine, it was, you know, with a big battery, it, it just flew. I'm I, it, I, The honeymoon has not ended for the M1 for me. I Every day I use it, every day I forget to plug it in and it doesn't matter. <laughs> I just think this is, this is a sea change in desktop computing. It really is. Um, so they had the, those were some new products, the SE. There was also, they started... Uh, making custom face shields, <laughs> which was a nice thing to do. Yeah. We never heard much more about that. 
They killed the butterfly cool. keyboard. Yes, in May of 2020, finally acknowledging that when they launched the 13-inch MacBook Pro, that, that perhaps not everybody liked the butterflies. Will that ever come back? Is that gone for good? Evil cannot be destroyed. Be able to be dissipated. <laughs> I was fearful that we would get a 12-inch MacBook with that keyboard I, again I because so Apple too. never said that it was dead. They yeah. always they just said that you know we're still we're still looking at it for other applications. And I was just the first one's going to be a 12-inch M1, please. and the world's going to break in half again. And I just can't please, take it in 2020 anymore. Please, the keyboard on the uh, new 13-inch MacBook Pro with M1 is very nice, very usable, yep. yeah, very good. Yeah. Yep, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. It's it's as good, I think, as I mean, it's 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 not a, it's not my favorite uh, mobile keyboard by any stretch, but it's a very very good keyboard. It's, a, it's as good probably as the 2015 MacBook Pro keyboard that it replaced, and that's kind of all I want. That's saying a lot. That was a that was the best, the last good Mac. I I, keyboard. I can use it. There's a key. There's there's actually more than yeah. half of a millimeter of key travel to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Who knew that? Who knew that that was a key to comfort? As the chat room says, the butter has flied. <laughs> um, let's see oh and this was the year of, oh, sad to say that uh, Tim Cook along with Mark Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos and all the tech execs were hauled to DC in July <clears throat> to testify although uh, some of what uh, the Senate hearing uh, was for Tim Cook was a, as, as the Atlantic put it a genius bar visit <laughs> Uh, questions like, why the he hell so do brilliant. I have to Did keep updating my apps on my iPhone all the time? And why don't you fix that? <laughs> I'm sorry. He dressed like it? Amy from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, completely <laughs> faded into his background. There was no contrast very on his smart. podcast at all. It was because like Mark was all up in their face and Jeff kept yeah. saying he couldn't, use the, he couldn't use the mute button and didn't know how Amazon worked. And that enraged <laughs> them. And Tim just sat there, blended into the wall and they forgot he was there for 45 yeah. minutes. That was from the late John McCain. Um Carl Levin of Michigan said, I have an iPhone in my pocket. <laughs> and then I have an iPad right here. My granddaughter even knows how to use it. All of it. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you about how my are grandchildren. People responsible for running government. <laughs> I'm, it's, it's, it's bewildering we, to me. It is our Can't government. Turn on an iPhone. I don't know what it's like in your uh, neck of the woods. Uh, well, I think you have a fairly young prime minister. Everybody, yeah, it but seems we have like a non-elected senator. Everybody in D.C. is now well over seventy. Some of them into their eighties and beyond. We're going to start having to have a Senate nap time. <laughs> um, anyway, and you hear people say like the crackpot senator from blah blah who can't turn on his iPhone, but they vote for him every every, every year. years or whatever it is. Well, he brings home the bacon. Can't drive a car, but he can run the government. He brings home the bacon. Uh, senator Kelly Iote, Republican of New Hampshire. Uh, said to Tim Apple, so nice to meet you. I have an iPad. <laughs> you know, I guess Tim probably hears that all the time. Oh, Tim Cook from Apple, right? I have an iPhone. Like, <laughs> Tim doesn't think, yes, yeah, so does everybody. Autocorrect is, at least complain about autocorrect. Use your power for the Use your power good. for good. Yeah. No, if they if they were if there were like a uh, like a a console like Xbox game for like Senate hearings, where you can put together like fantasy uh, matchups. Just like you say, what if Larry Bird played on a team with Shaq? It's like I would love to play out this the same game. Only yeah, it's not Tim Cook. It's Steve Jobs. <laughs> that's that's the person you're you're saying. Hey, well, my granddaughter uses a, uses an iPad for this, and he's like, and to have Steve reply with. I wish we could elevate the conversation a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I have to apologize. I was reading an article from 2013, although it wasn't that much. Yeah, that was the. That was. That it wasn't that much different. That that, that was the one no. where like so, where uh, the, the, the senator asked a big problem about something that going on with the iPhone, and then didn't realize that it was Sundar Pichai on the stand. Yes. Saying, yeah, sir. We, yes. we don't make the iPhone. Yeah. No. <laughs> yes. That's the thing. It hasn't in seven years. It didn't get any better. Uh, I should, the giveaway was when uh, when uh, John McCain asked a question. I should have I should have recognized yeah. <laughs> the improbability of that. His um, presence is still felt in the Senate to this it's very. It's still day. felt. You never you never forget the greats.